there's something that I think you need to uh, you need to know. There was on TikTok. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, you're gonna fight it. What the Chinese government TikTok is doing something nefarious? Yes, and it's not just them. Um, we're about to see a big, big change in um, social media, and it revolves around the news. Uh, and I'll explain more of that tomorrow. Um, but there was a uh, there was a uh, an account that was held by Evita Duffy Alfonso, and she's a staff writer at the Federalist um, and co-founder of the Chicago Thinker, and she was uh, talking about what these climate psychos are doing, um, and they're they're going to restrict our movement, and this is. This, I think, is just a convenient uh, effect of everything this administration has done, from not searching for our own oil to putting all kinds of restraints on people to, you know, um, dis- you know making sure that the airlines are in their pocket uh, and the shortage of workers now that we have. I don't know if you've flown recently, but whew. It's an even less uh, fun experience than it used to be. And it is also undependable now. You, you don't know if you're going to get trapped someplace. At least that's the way I and my family feel. Um, that you fly someplace and you get to the plane and you're like, okay, it's delayed. But there's, in my family, there's been, I think, three planes that they were you know, waiting for um, and took them two days to get home. Because it was delayed, 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 canceled. And, you know, that's not a dependable thing. And I think that works to the advantage of the climate huggers. Because here's what they really want. Now, she made a video and she said these facts. And they were taken off because they're misleading or harmful to humans. Okay, I don't, why? Huh, okay. So here's the thing. There in France, it is incredible what they're doing in France. New study conducted by the research firm Consumer Science and Analytics Institute found that 41% of citizens in France support banning people from flying more than four times in their lifetimes because of climate change. You would only take four flights your entire lifetime. Even more disturbing, 59% of 18 to 24-year-olds in France support the radical limit on air travel. So what did they do? In France, they have already outlawed domestic flights less than two and a half hours long. So you know, two and a half hours long, that's about a 20, 21-hour drive. Okay? It's not, Mm. it's, it's, you know, uh, not here to the burbs. It's, you know, it's not even New York to Rochester. Because that's about a 45-minute flight. That's, that's New York to Cincinnati. Maybe even further than that. That's a long flight. You won't be able to fly, in France, they are already doing it, within two and a half hours from the airport. So what does that mean? Well, when they're banning gas, when they're forcing you into a car that only goes 400 miles, that's not, 400 miles is not enough to take you two and a half hours. So how are you driving there in one day? The key is you're not driving there. The G40 cities, which we have talked about, um, the G40 city climate leadership group, This is a a globalist climate organization, and we got red flags for talking about this because they say this is not true. But listen to the way this is worded, because it is absolutely true. Um, I can tell you that the global climate organization is 100 cities across the world, 14 American cities. It has a 2030 target, important, target 
of limiting air travel to one short haul return flight less than 1500 uh, kilometers every three years per person. It's in 14 Mm. American cities. Now, when I say this is their goal, this is what they're trying to do. We were flagged by, I don't remember which social media group, as telling untruths because they said, no, it says target. And I said, that's a goal. No, that's a target. Nowhere do they say this is a goal. This is just a number that they're throwing oh, out there. And uh, they're not saying that it has to be done. Or I said, that's, that's the same with a goal. <laughs> Anyway, um, so they are suppressing this for some uh, some reason or another. If these C-40 cities get their way, people will not be able to take their one short haul flight every three years since C-40 uh, cities make up about one twelfth of the global population. One flight per person every three years would cut the air industry's emission by way more than 43%. Basically, it will annihilate the air travel industry. So if you lose, well, you know what's going to be left? Concords for really rich people. Uh, private planes mm-hmm. for really rich people. That, that's, that's all that's going to be left. The really rich people will travel. You will not. This is this is what they banned her for. It is so important that you uh, learn how to find the truth and find it on your own. Um, there is coming a time. I mean, Pat, what do you think the honest odds are that we go? I mean, there's a chance miracles happen and it doesn't have to go this way. Um, but Israel is escalating the airstrikes against Gaza. Um, Iran is behind it. Iran has a nuclear weapon. Iran has the crazy religious people who say we're going to destroy Israel to hasten the return of the promised one, which is end times talk. Uh, but then you have Russia on their side. China Mm -hmm. just sent six six ships into the area. Mm -hmm. We've got two carrier groups now in the area. Uh, what are the odds we're not in World War Three a year from now? That we're not? That we're not. Mm. <laughs> I'd like to think it's at least 50-50. Okay, 50-50. Yeah. 50-50. Do you remember? I mean, maybe you didn't, you didn't learn this, but um, I'm sure you did. In the 1930, or 1940s, when we went to war, every newsroom had a monitor. Mm. They didn't, they couldn't edit you after it was out. They couldn't suppress it after it was out. So you had to have a military for any national program. You had a military monitor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they told you pretty much what you can and cannot say. No, 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 no. You're not saying that. That's in world war two with the internet And with everything, not just being national, but international, Mm -hmm. do you really think that monitors won't be in everybody's newsroom? And actually, if you say, no, I don't think so, you're probably right. They won't be monitors. They don't need to be in every room. They will just shut you down. Yeah. They'll just throttle you so you just won't have anybody listening Mm -hmm. uh, or watching. And they can already can and do. Already, already. Do already do that. And it will happen overnight. Mm-hmm. And it will happen when it's there's a real crisis and you get up and you want to know about it and you go to look for your favorite whoever to explain this and they're not going to be there. So it is vital that you uh, learn to hear over the noise and actually be able to decipher what is true. And there's a couple of easy things that you can do, and we'll tell you about that coming up in just a minute. So the first thing you need to do if you're learning, if you want, if you want to be your own editor, you want to be able to find the truth. This is one of the most 
uh, frequently asked questions of me. Who do you trust? How do you find out who to trust? Where, you know, where do I go to get the real news? I will tell you that I know because I work here and I'm the founder of it. Blaze tries really, really hard to get it right. Daily Wire tries really, really hard to get it right. Uh, the caller, Daily Caller, tries to get it right. Um, there's a there's a few websites. Just the news, I trust. However, you shouldn't trust anyone. You have to look for the sources. Um, and for instance, just the news gives you all of the sources because they're mainly they're generating the stories themselves entirely. Um, and so they're reporting on what they have learned. And so the sources are there. Um, but you can't trust anybody. What you have to do is first narrow it down by saying, have you ever read one of those stories? Let me give you this. Have you ever read one of those stories where you're not sure what the hell they're even talking about? You can't follow the story because a gunman walked in and then they did this and then they got into the car and you're like, wait, is, is there more than one person? Is it a he, she? No, it's just somebody who identifies as they. Is that right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, you've probably mm -hmm. read those stories before. That you should write that down so you know. Keep a journal. Can't trust this news source. If they can't get some eternal truths right because of political correctness, you cannot trust them. So if they're, they're using they, them, or... Um, you know, pronouns that are, if they, they say, what was the, um, Maxim Australia Maxim. Did you see this Australia Maxim came out with their hot 100 and like number two or number one is a guy. Oh yeah. And uh, you yeah. look at They're hot and you're 100 like, women. Yeah. Hot 100 women. Yeah. And it was right. a guy mm -hmm. and she ain't hot. No. Now looks like a guy. Right. A square jawed guy. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, look, I don't get my news from Maxim, uh, but they're not trustworthy on anything. Mm -hmm. If they cannot get that right, you can't believe anything that they say. If they're willing to publish that big of a lie, then you don't know when they're lying. The more subtle stuff will come very, very easily to them. So that's the first thing that you have to do. Um, and I suggest you start doing that now. Start making a list of, you know, organizations that you trust. Those organizations are going to have a tough time surviving here in the, the coming times, especially if we go to war. You need to know who they are and you need to know how to follow them directly. Uh, I told you earlier this uh, this uh, episode that we were talking to, uh, or no, I'm sorry, I was reading a story yesterday that came from Facebook. Campbell Brown was running their news division, and they're getting rid of their news division. Now, I'm not sure exactly yet all that it means, and I think they wouldn't tell us all that it means, but what how it's being reported is, that media, these social media companies, they're so tired of getting, you know, in trouble from the government on, you know, what to print, what not to print, and all these news things that they just, they're going to get out of the business. Well, what business is that? Is that you curating the news yourself? Or is it, does that also include places like The Blaze? who is a news publisher? Are we not allowed to publish on, is that in the future that we won't be allowed to publish on Facebook? My guess is yes, because the minute this is implemented, ABC, CBS, all of these discredited mainstream media places, you're not going to see their stuff because if, if Facebook isn't selecting those stories from those companies, do you know anybody that goes to abc.news.go to get their news? Because I don't. 
I don't. Um, and uh, you need to know who they are. Because when this starts to backlash because the Facebook is not pushing you to ABC or CNN or NBC, they're going to feel the pinch. And we've already felt it. When you're, when you're banished for, to outer darkness by Facebook or whoever, you feel it and it affects your bottom line. I think more is coming on this. So know how to get a hold of your people because right now is probably the best it's going to be for a while when you say, I want to follow that person. If they're conservative and news, you're going to probably have more and more harder times getting those stories actually into your feed. And it's important that you get the stuff that you trust from the people you trust and stay one with the news.